some viruses cause cancer, this one can be prevented with a vaccine. Hi, I'm Dr. Sujatha Chapa from Access Health Louisiana. As a physician who has been treating patients for years who are diagnosed with a variety of sexually transmitted infections, I'm here to talk to you about human papillomavirus, or HPV. There are strains of this virus that have been associated with some forms of cancer, which is why it is important to understand it and know what to do when you are diagnosed. HPV spreads mainly through sexual contact and is very common in young people. The good news is that HPV infections often clear on their own within a year or two, and generally they don't cause harmful health concerns. However, there are some types that can lead to cervical changes in women that lead to cancer. These changes usually take several years, often 10 years or more, to develop. So it is important to understand HPV. For women who received cervical cancer screenings, commonly known as pap smears, HPV may show up as an abnormal pap. Many times, an additional test is done to determine what type of HPV virus is present which is important to know since there are hundreds of different types, some of which can have serious consequences. For men, in rare instances, it can lead to cancer as well. And while there is no routine test for men to check for high-risk HPV strains that can cause cancer, it may be advisable for gay and bisexual men to get anal pap tests. Let's discuss some important facts about HPV that you need to pay attention to. Fact one. If you've been diagnosed, don't panic. It is the most common of all sexually transmitted infections. In fact, the latest stats from the CDC estimate that 80% of sexually active people will have HPV at some point in their lives. Most genital HPV infections will produce no symptoms or illness, so a person who has been infected may never even know about it. In 90% of cases, your immune system fights off the infection within two years there are around 200 strains of HPV. This is important since you need to care about the one you were diagnosed with. Why? Because it is important to know if the one you have is associated with a cancer risk. Of those 200 plus strains, only around 13 carry the ability to cause cancer. Being diagnosed with HPV, you may or may not have genital warts. Only some HPV types can cause genital warts and those are considered low risk with a very small chance for causing cancer. There are other types, subtypes 16 and 18 specifically, which are considered high risk, causing cancer in different areas of the body, including the cervix and vagina in women, penis in men, and anus and oropharynx in both men and women. Other intermediate risk HPV types include 31, 33, and 35, and are also associated with risk for cancer. Unless you're completely celibate your entire life, there's no foolproof way to avoid being exposed to HPV. While it's most commonly transmitted through vaginal, anal, or oral sex, some HPV types are transmitted through intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact, meaning you don't actually need to have penetrative sex to transmit HPV. So yes, it is really easy to contract it, but there is a way to minimize its effects on you. Let me explain. First, be vaccinated. Vaccines are the most effective when you complete the series of vaccines prior to having sexual relations. That is why it is recommended that children ages 9 through 12 get the vaccine as part of their regular health and wellness exams. It's a great way to set them up to be healthy adults. Secondly, as a woman, make sure to get regular cervical cancer screenings with your gynecologist. This is where HPV shows up since it is the cause of nearly all cervical cancers. Third, proper condom usage can reduce transmission. But as with most sexually transmitted diseases, myths about HPV are plentiful. It's important to clear those up here and now. So listen up. You may be surprised at what you learn about HPV. So let's dispel some misperceptions about HPV. My pap smear came back abnormal and I'm told it's HPV. That's sexually transmitted, and I haven't been intimate with anyone in the last six months, maybe even a year. So I'm super annoyed and confused. HPV can be confusing. If it wasn't for your annual pap smear, you likely would not have known that you've had the virus. But 
Just because you found out you have it does not mean you recently contracted it. In fact, it can be something you caught one year ago or one decade ago. It doesn't matter when you were last intimate with someone. What you need to understand is that if you've ever been intimate with anyone, that could have been your exposure, regardless of how long ago it was. I don't have HPV because I get screened for STIs pretty often and it hasn't come up, so I know I'm in the clear. Let's set the record straight on this STI. There's no simple test to find out your HPV status since it is not included in the regular STI screenings. Additionally, there's no approved HPV test to find out HPV in the mouth or throat. Most people with HPV do not know they have it. It pops up during cervical cancer screenings. And for most women, there aren't symptoms. So I applaud you for getting your STI screening regularly. That's awesome and what every sexually active adult should be doing. But don't let yourself be fooled that you know your HPV status unless you've had a pap test from your GP or your gynecologist. I don't have genital warts or other symptoms, so I don't have HPV. That's not really true. There are often no warts present in a person who is positive for HPV. It is true that some people find out that they have HPV when they have genital warts, but it's the abnormal pap test result during your cervical cancer screening or other serious problem that may have developed that will alert you if you have HPV. It seems so unfair that HPV is an infection that only women get. After all, it is sexually transmitted, so you'd think my boyfriend and I would both be at risk. Actually, you both are at risk. Men get it too. They don't have a screening similar to a woman's pap test that looks for signs of cervical cancer, so they aren't as aware if they have it. Although certain subtypes can cause cancer in both men and women, penile cancer and other cancers associated with HPV for men are fairly rare. There are lots of ways to get rid of HPV, so I'll just take antibiotics if I get it. No biggie. That's incorrect. Most of the time, HPV is no biggie, as it resolves on its own. But you should know that there's actually no treatment or cure for HPV. You can treat the warts or precancerous lesions, but you won't be given a course of antibiotics. Remember, this is a virus, and like all viruses, it doesn't respond to antibiotics. I wanted to stay safe against HPV, so I just had oral sex on my last date. I didn't want to take any chances with my new boyfriend. Hate to tell you this, but HPV can be spread through oral sex along with intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact. While HPV transmission by sexual contact often doesn't become active enough to cause symptoms, when it does become active, it tends to invade the mucous membranes, such as those covering the lining of the vagina, the cervix, the anus, the mouth, tongue, and throat. An HPV infection can cause warts in and around these tissues. An infection that persists can cause long-term effects, such as oropharyngeal cancer. That's a cancer that affects the back of the throat, including the base of the tongue and tonsils. I've always wanted children, and now I'm worried that it'll be impossible since I found out I have HPV. I don't want to endanger my pregnancy or give it to my children. Women have had children all the time who've had HPV. There has been no link found between HPV and miscarriage, premature delivery, or other pregnancy complications. Also, the risk of having HPV transmission to the baby during childbirth is extremely low. And in the rare event a baby gets the HPV virus, their bodies usually clear the virus on their own. Now that I've been diagnosed with HPV, all I can think about is how I will get cancer. I'm just petrified. It is true that HPV is linked to cervical cancer in women and rare cancers in men, but only certain subtypes cause those cancer. And remember that the majority are not the type that cause cancer. As a woman, see your gynecologist regularly as they're the best one to diagnose if you have HPV and which type you have. If you have an abnormal pap smear, your provider will likely order additional tests to learn more about your HPV. With frequent screenings, the harm of HPV can be considerably reduced, so no need to worry about it as long as you are on a regular schedule of cervical cancer screenings. I don't want to have my daughter and son vaccinated for HPV. I mean, that sends a message to them that it's okay for them to start having sex. I'm not for it at all. Plus, I don't like vaccines. They don't seem safe to me. 
Whoa, put the bricks on that thinking. The HPV vaccine is a necessary medical intervention to prevent cancer in the future. So to think about the HPV vaccine in any other way is short-sighted. Your preteen or young teenage children having sex isn't the first place your mind should go to when you're thinking about this potentially life-saving vaccine. The vaccine is about doing the responsible thing now to help them stay healthy and safe in the future. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Giving them the best chance to fight cancer is the goal here. Like any vaccine or medicine, the vaccine may cause mild reactions. The most common are pain or redness in the arm where the actual shot is given. And I will take that over cancer any day. How about you? I got the vaccine when I was 12, so I don't need to go get regular pap exams. I can't get cervical cancer. Kudos to your parents. I'm glad that they got you vaccinated. That is awesome, and yes, it dramatically cuts the chances of you developing cancer from HPV. But your gynecological health should remain your focus. And while we like to think of vaccines as 100% effective, that simply isn't the case. The HPV vaccine is absolutely essential, but we can't say your chances of getting cervical cancer are zero if you take it. Don't get me wrong, your chances are dramatically reduced, but like all vaccines, there is a very slight chance of contracting it. So continue to get screened. I liken vaccines to like seatbelts. You want one in case you're in a car accident, but it can't prevent you from getting in an accident in the first place. I was shocked when I found out my friend's daughter got cervical cancer. I thought she was happily married and now I am appalled that she cheated on her husband. Well, hang on, cause I'm about to tell you something that will drastically change your opinion about that. If you've had sex at any time in your life, then you probably contracted HPV at some point too. It could have been from your first encounter when you were 16 or later at 22 or when you were 30 or even last night. Your friend's daughter could have contracted it anywhere at any time from a long time ago. So before you judge her marriage and her morals, consider that viruses can be dormant and sneaky and not making themselves apparent for years or decades. So there's no telling when the virus was actually contracted. I just learned that one of my students in my third grade class has a wart on her finger. I'm not sure what to think. Was she sexually abused? I mean, I know all warts are basically HPV. I'm ready to call the authorities. Hold off there. Those are big assumptions, and they're likely quite wrong. These warts are not from sexual transmission. Kids and adults get warts on their body caused by a type of HPV that has entered the body through tiny cuts, breaks, or weak spots in the bottom of their feet. Most of these warts aren't a serious health concern and usually go away without treatment. Some may be pretty persistent, like plantar warts, which are cutaneous warts. These are different, however, from the genital and anogenital warts that are contracted through sex. HPV is the most common STI of all of them. The silent, sneaky STI will likely affect nearly every sexually active being at one time or another in our lifetime. So understanding when to be concerned about it and how to take action is the best way to manage your perception of it and your expectations. Remember, if and when you get it, you will likely have no lasting health concerns from it. There's a big downside if you ignore a diagnosis. So it is important to remember a few things. Number one, getting vaccinated. If you're a parent, Get your child vaccinated as part of their wellness health exam. The best time for kids to be vaccinated is ages nine through 12, but you can get vaccinated well into adulthood. Number two, as a woman, follow your current recommendations for pap smears, especially if you've been vaccinated. Yearly exams will be a thing of the past. Remember, most adult men and women will get the HPV virus over the course of their lifetime, and most are not going to lead to cancer. But when you know the facts about HPV and the HPV vaccine, congratulate yourself that you are doing what you can to protect yourself and your family from HPV-related cancers.